Welcome to this self-talk session. We're going to have an overview of the five different viral types of hepatitis. Hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. So at the end of this video, you should be able to explain to a friend, briefly and without hesitation, what hepatitis is, and even differentiate between the five different types of viral hepatitis, as mentioned earlier. But that is A, B, C, D, and E. So first of all, what is hepatitis? Hepatitis means inflammation of the liver, toxins, certain drugs, some diseases, excessive alcohol use, and bacterial as well as viral infections can cause hepatitis. Hepatitis also denotes a family of viral infections that affect the liver. Most common types are hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. You know, situated in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen is our liver. And this vital organ I mean, has a lot of functions, including the cleaning of the blood, the detoxification of the blood, regulation of hormones. It also helps with blood clotting, bile production, and the production of important proteins. Also, participates in the maintenance of blood sugar levels, and much, much more. So this really tells us that the liver is essential for life. And that's to say, any kind of perturbation or stop to the normal functioning of the liver is going to affect us a lot as far as our health is concerned. Alright, so having been able to, I mean, understand what really hepatitis is, being the inflammation of the liver, let's try to differentiate between these five different viral hepatitis. Being able to do this will help us have an in-depth knowledge of hepatitis and also knowing the mode of transmission of these diseases will help us take, I mean, appropriate preventive measures against these diseases. So just apart from the fact that the five the different types of viral hepatitis are actually caused by five different viruses. For instance, hepatitis A is caused by hepatitis A virus, B by hepatitis B in that order. It also differ greatly when it comes to the type of infection, be it acute or chronic. Acute in the sense that the infection doesn't persist for that long, and the signs and symptoms start to show up like not long after the exposition to the virus. Chronic in a sense that the disease can persist for many years and this, it's, most of the chronic infections are often asymptomatic. That there, there are no way signs. That's why they've got a lot of uh, I mean, serious effect on the body. They also differ in terms of vaccine preventability or the transmission, the mode of transmission. So if we consider the hepatitis A, for instance, it's an acute infection it has got a vaccine, fortunately, and the mode of transmission is fecal oral. That's to say, like we contract it from the eating of food, I mean, drinking of water that is being contaminated with um, feces. That is B has got both chronic and acute phases, and in most cases, an acute infection that hasn't been handled properly can easily turn into a chronic infection, especially in a case where it's asymptomatic. It hasn't. It has got a vaccine, fortunately, and it's transmitted by sexual fluids and blood-to-blood -blood contact. So this tells us that we should avoid sharing cutting objects like nail cutters and what have you. Hepatitis C2 has got both chronic and acute phases, but unfortunately it hasn't got a vaccine 
and is transmitted by blood blood contact. Hepatitis D has got both acute and chronic phases with no vaccine and it, it with a transmission it usually goes with hepatitis B. Thus they've got the same mode of transmission and in most cases a person being diagnosed of hepatitis B is predisposed to hepatitis D. Hepatitis E is also an acute infection just like hepatitis A but with no vaccine and the border contamination is also fecal oral. So please remember to wash your vegetables very well and any kind of food try to eat not I mean, contaminated food just to minimize the risk of eating food that may be contaminated with feces and that could lead to the I mean, contraction of either hepatitis A or E. And do not also I mean, share cutting objects to minimize the risk of contraction of hepatitis B or C and also the use of contraceptives can help you I mean protect yourself from hepatitis B and hepatitis D as I said it goes with hepatitis B so thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe if you would like to know more about the symptoms of hepatitis B please click on the next video stay healthy